Hey, this is Magna, and welcome to this new tutorial series on modding Total War Attila. Uh, to get right off the bat, I'm going to talk a bit about the differences modding Total War Attila uh, for those of you who have already modded Rome 2. Essentially, the differences are very, very small. Uh, unit modding is ex almost exactly the same. You see the variant mesh definition structures are the same. The models are the same. Creating new textures, it's all the same. Uh, we've still got the DB tables, the database tables, and that's all pretty much the same, except that the structure of most, a lot of the DB, DB tables, a lot of the database tables has changed. Uh, but it's still fairly similar. What that means is all the tutorials that I've done for Rome 2 Total War, I think there's about 50 tutorials I've already done, or maybe a little bit more. Uh, you can still refer to them and learn how to mod Attila with those. I won't be uh, cop uh, redoing any of those tutorials for Attila because they're pretty much exactly the same. So uh, go back into the into the Magna tutorials for Rome 2 if you, and have a look there and see what can be done. And uh, that's a good way to get familiar with how to mod and how to mod a certain few different things which I've already shown. Uh, now, for those of you who are new to modding, you will need the latest, well, not just new to modding, but everyone who wants to mod this because the assembly kit has not yet been released. I think it's at least another month or so off before it's released. Uh, you will need a program called Pack File Manager. There will be a link in the comments to the latest version as of the day of release of Attila. And uh, you will probably need to update that as CA releases new patches and as the um, as it gets improved further. So, but that's the initial pack you can get uh, to get started into the modding. So once you have that installed, you want to go to your data folder in the Total War Attila. So that's in your Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Total War Attila, Data, uh, and then we have a pack file here. Well, we've got a lot of pack files here, all different, doing different things. So the models are going to be where your unit models are. Uh, so where all the the looks and the appearance of all the different units and all the models that they use. That's all in these models folders. The local EN, well, that's EN means English. You may have a different local localization pack. That's what it is. Uh, this is where all the text is. So the unit names is in there, uh, faction names, descriptions, faction descriptions, uh, all those texts you find when you have your attributes and uh, traits and all that kind of stuff. N unit uh, f character names. That's all in the local localization packs. Sound is sound, and music. Yep, movies is where your movies are. That's all pretty self-explanatory. And then tiles and terrain is for your campaign map files. Uh, so apart from the pack files, we also have a file type called a start pause file or an ESF file. And what this does, it determines the con starting conditions for a campaign. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can mod in there as well, but we won't get into that into the, in this tutorial. I have tutorials for Rome 2 which do the same thing, and the structure is uh, fairly similar. It's, uh, it's not not this exact, not exactly the same, but it's fairly similar enough. It's enough similar enough that you can get by with the Rome 2 Rome 2 tutorials that I've already done. Uh, so let's get straight in and have a look at the data pack for Attila. So. All the other packs are structured fairly similarly. And essentially, what they are is just a folder. Uh, it's just a file directory. So you're going to have uh, you got the main folder, the data folder, or whatever other pack you're looking at, with subfolders. The one we want is called DB. DB standing for database, and that has a number of subfolders, each with either one or more tables in it. So this is the KV rules table, and this is a database table used by the game to look up all the different values uh, that the game uses, whether it be how much damage a weapon has, what unit stats are, uh, how far units, how, how far armies can move, or all those types of things. It's all in the uh, database for the game. Now we can overwrite or remove these values 
and create our mod. That's how we create most mods, is by changing values for the database and uh, creating our new mod. Uh, and the way we do that is we go file, new, you get a blank pack here. Now don't save it until you've added something to it, otherwise it just won't work. And so we're gonna click it, right click, open, oh sorry, no, add, from pack, uh, this is, sorry, my uh, Rome 2 data folder is my default location, but let's go to the Attila one. So we're gonna open that pack we just opened before. Go into the DB table, oop, oh, wrong one. Okay, DB table, and that's, now there's two ways we can add stuff from here. I go, I go add from pack because when we do that, it automatically creates the directory. If we go add file, it won't do that. So it's much more convenient and quicker to do add from pack. And then we go either right click a folder like so, or we can double click one of the tables inside. So double click that. You can see here it says it's been added. Now we can double click again and it's removed. So I'm just adding this KB rules table here. Uh, and then it becomes green. Green means it's been added and we can save it. Control S or we can go file save. Now we're going to save it uh, not in our data folder. We will put it into our data folder uh, to use it but I like to have it saved in a separate folder. So I'll go to my own folder where I've got my own mods and we're going to call it, let's call it test mod. I already created one. And yeah, we'll replace it. Okay. So the test mod we've got when all the tables here, it's all in black letters, that means that nothing's been changed. Nothing added, nothing removed, nothing edited. So what we're going to do first, we're going to jump into KV rules and have a look here. Uh, so this, what we're going to do for our mod is we're just going to change one value. There we go. Nice and simple. We'll just change that from minus 10 to minus 5. And that's all that will do. It will reduce a little half of the reduction to accuracy in fog, foggy weather. Okay, so now we can save that. Now that mod is pretty much finished, if, in a way. I mean, there's more we can do to it to uh, improve it, and that's what we're going to do now. So that, that's just a basic mod. You just add a table, edit a value, you're done after you save it. You saw that the writing became red. Let me just do it again. Let's go minus three, actually. You see the writing here becomes red of that. That means that something's been edited or it's been deleted. Uh, now, an important part of modding is how you name your table. Uh, we can leave the table named exactly how it is in vanilla. And what that means is that the entire table that we have here, all 205 rows of it, uh, will replace what the vanilla table is. Which means if we remove rows from, from this table, so we remove these two rows, it means that those two rows we just removed will not be loaded by the game. Now because this table you're not really meant to remove rows from and call it the vanilla name, that means that it'll probably crash and we won't be able to use the mod. But for tables where you want to remove uh, units from faction rosters, that's where, you, that's where that's really important to call it as a vanilla table. Now most mods, however, will only need to, will not call it by, we'll have no need to call it the vanilla name table. Instead what we do is called fragmenting and what that is is we will change the name of the table, not the folder. Uh, so I'm going to call it here Magnar, now it's called Magnar KV Rules. Uh, we can jump back out of there, you can see it's called green, means I've changed the name of the table, it's kind of considering it as a new table. Save it. Now when we fragment the table, what that does is we can delete everything what happens now is the game will first load the vanilla name table, so KV rules, uh, and then after that it will load the Magnar KV rules table. And whatever is in the Magnar table will overwrite only those values that are in the table. So only this accuracy modifier fog value in the original table when loaded will be overwritten. All the other tables will stay exactly the same as the vanilla tables table. 
Now, the benefits to fragmenting your database tables uh, is, firstly, it makes it much easier to manage your mod and, and deal with any changes that you need to do because you know exactly what you've already changed. If you had 205 entries and you changed one and you want to figure out, what did I change? It might be a year from now. You go, I did something with this mod, but I can't figure it out. There's only one value in 205. You have to do a lot of comparing and figure all that out. Uh, so it's much quicker to f delete what you don't use and just fragment it. Secondly, c mod compatibility. Uh, if you have five mods or you're using five mods and they all edit the same table, if none of those mods fragment their table name, so change the name, then only one of those five mods will actually be active because each, t each one of those mods will overwrite the other mod. If they all fragment and they all edit different values within that uh, table, then all mods will be active. There's also the situation where two mods will uh, change the same value in the same table. And the way that th which one is used is determined either by if you have uh, the community mod manager that was made, by, made for Rome 2, I think by Mitch, uh, that allows you to set which tables overwrite which manually. In vanilla Rome 2, I'm sure it's pro probably going to be the same for Attila as well, uh, it is determined by the, uh, the name of the mod pack. So our mod pack here is called Test Mod Pack. If we change that and called it uh, A Mod Pack, starting with the letter A, then, and we modified the same value and we loaded both mods up, the value that's in the A mod pack would overwrite the value in test mod pack. A overwrites Z, essentially. So it's, alpha, it's determined by alphabetical order of the mod pack name. Uh, so if you have mods which shouldn't really be overwritten or will cause problems if they are, then you will need to uh, probably make your name fairly low in the alphabetical list. Okay, so now we've finished that mod pack. Uh, and we can go and actually load it up. I'm not going to load it up in this game, in this uh, tutorial, but because it's not really that easy to see the effect of only doing that. But here we go. We just All we do is we copy it and we'll paste it in there. I like to keep it separate because if you, make a mis if you change something or you want to test stuff, it's easy to do it in the data folder version and you always have a working version uh, backed up in a, in a separate directory. Now, currently there is no uh, mod workshop set up for Attila, but I'm sure that will come shortly. Uh, so for now, all you need to do to load it is you just go to your, oh, hang on a sec. You start your Attila up, you go to click your mod manager, click your test pack. You have to enable out of date mods uh, and that's, and you just click play and then it's going to load up. Now, when the workshop becomes available, now that then there is an then it becomes important how you name your mod as well, and you also need to create an image for your mod to be able to upload it to the workshop. Uh, all workshop mods cannot have any spaces in their name, so you should get into that habit. You can see all these mods that I've created here; they all have underscores instead of spaces. If you have a space, your mod will not work. So. Get used, get used to either putting no spaces in there or replacing it with some character. Also, to upload to the workshop, the mod workshop, when it's available, you will need an image. Now, you can do the image and use it before the workshop is available as well. And I've done one here for a mod I've already created in preparation for the workshop. So I'll copy those over to show you how that will look. So I'll have the PNG file. It'll be 256 times 256 pixels. Make it look however you want. And we just go play. We just copy and paste it, both of the files in. They have to be named exactly the same, otherwise it won't work. And we click on Mod Manager and you can see here the image appears with the mod. To upload it, as you do with Rome 2, ooh, okay, as you do with Rome 2, there'll be an Upload button or an Update button and you just click it 
and it'll take you to the uh, Steam Workshop page for your new mod. Uh, and that's all there is to the introduction of how to mod. Fairly simple. Uh, like I said earlier, check out the tutorials I've done for Rome 2 modding. Uh, how to do them is all pretty much exactly the same or very, very similar. Uh, so that's a good place to get started, get familiar with the files and uh, where everything's located and how to do stuff. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next episode.